And as you know, this program is uh, right down the middle, totally bipartisan. So here at the, the table, we have a Democrat and a Republican. Uh, Fred Johnson, candidate for Congress. Uh, very nice to meet you, sir. Democrat running uh, for the seat that was occupied by uh, Pete Hoekstra here in, in Congress. Good morning That's correct. to you. Good to meet you. How's the campaign going? It's going very well. You like it so far? We have moments of fun, yes. <laughs> <laughs> moments of fun. Yes. That's pretty good. Now, you're, you're a widely published author, as I understand. And uh, so I suppose in your head, if you were going to write the ending of this election, and by the way, we're 46 days away now from the general election, how, how, would, you, uh, how would you pen the story? Because most people think that it's a fait accompli that a Republican would be elected to that seat after all these years. Johnson shocks political world, upsurge of Democrats not seen coming, victory obtained how can you do that because there's a lot of there's a lot of what we call in the district closet democrats yeah people in the second congressional district who have never had a reason to actually come out and vote for a democrat the there are democrats who have run before there have been some okay candidates but for the most part they were sort of like cosmetic campaigns we have run an aggressive serious campaign speaking very forthrightly and aggressively to the issues and that's what people wanted they wanted somebody that could actually identify as a leader and then go ahead and cast their vote in an area that isn't necessarily very friendly to Democrats. Well, obviously now you you also don't have to run against an incumbent, which makes it a whole new ball game, really. It's a, it's an entirely new ball game because, as you know, running it against an incumbent carries its own amount of difficulty. But now that the seat is open, it's the first time in a half century that there's a chance that a Democrat can win the seat. Uh, you are a, an associate professor of American history at Hope College. Uh, if you were to give President Obama a grade, A through F at the moment right now. What would his grade be? B plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the president is catching a lot, of, a lot of flack because this is an administration that's actually tried to do something. There's one thing I learned in the Marine Corps is that you know, leadership comes at a cost. And you can take the safe road and do nothing. And, and, and you know, people will talk about that and maybe they'll be, they'll be satisfied with it. But when you, walk, when you come into office like he did and actually have to make major decisions and make some major structural changes to try and heal the country, put it back on the path to prosperity, it's going to cause a reaction. So much of the controversy right now is because the president actually tried to do something. And so what I think the president needs to do is actually speak more to that story and be more aggressive about talking about the good things that have happened in his administration. It's fashionable, it seems to me now, for uh, candidates to call themselves pro-business Democrats. Mm -hmm. Why do they have to say that? because you would presume that all candidates are pro-business. How did Democrats get stuck with the label of uh, maybe not being supportive of business? They lost the battle of the airwaves. Democrats have been very, very good about wringing their hands and complaining about you know, how unfair it is, but they simply need to be just as, uh, just as aggressive and just as forthright and just as determined to make sure that what they're doing is supportive of American business as, as anybody else. And I think you're right. All candidates are pro-business. Everybody wants the country to be successful. We may have different ways of getting there, but it's a, I think it's just a failure of being able to speak to who we truly are. Um, when did you get the idea that you would want to run for office? At, uh, at what, what was the moment when you said, you know, I think I want to get that involved? Actually, people from the 2nd Congressional District came and asked me to run in 2007. Mm -hmm. I took about three and a half months to think about it because I wanted to make sure I was doing it for all the right reasons. I reflected on it. I prayed about it. And at the end of that period, I decided this is the right thing to do. At the time, as you know, that things weren't going so well in Iraq. And of course, we were in, at the, at not so much at the end, but certainly at the beginning of an economic crisis. And public education was under assault and so many other things. And I come from a family, from a working family. I'm, a, I'm an educator. I'm a product of the public school system. I served in the US Marine Corps as an officer for, two, for 11 years. And I just decided that all things considered, it was the right thing to do. Historically speaking, since you're a history professor, mm -hmm. uh, who do you admire? Who, who, who do you not idolize, but uh, you know, who's your sort of political mentor, even though you may not know them? A historical figure that you relate to? Well, I, I, I definitely admire George Washington, because not just because he was the, the, one of the founding fathers, certainly the first president, but because George Washington came into office at a time where everything in America was brand new. The, 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 the you know, experiment of Republican democracy. And because of the kind of things that he had to do, everything that they were doing was, for the first time, they were basically writing the rule book. Later on, of course, it would be Abraham Lincoln who guided the country through that trauma of the Civil War. And then Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and I think probably more in the modern era, 
you know, John F. Kennedy and uh, and Bill Clinton because they have, uh, you know, because of the, the the way of the way they had to maneuver through a very very hostile time. You know, some presidencies have some problems with with, uh, with other things, but these were presidents who were in the midst of great controversy, and they took a lot of heat for it. But they also were very good for the country economically and putting us on a path to prosperity. Fred Johnson is the Democratic candidate for Congress here in West Michigan in the second congressional district. He's running against Bill Heisinger for the seat that has been occupied for the better part of two decades by Pete Hoekstra. A state representative, Dave Agema, is with us, the Republican here from West Michigan. Are we, uh, are we, you know, we, Mr. Johnson talked about how everything was new for, for uh, President Washington. Are we living in a new America today? <laughs> no, we're just living in an America that's, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's different, not, that's for it, sure. It's different because a normal society and a, historically a society starts out uh, like we did very conservative and gradually works its way into a hole from excessive government, excessive taxation, excessive regulation. That's where we're at. So what's happened in Michigan, in my opinion, is uh, we have overregulated and overtaxed and we've driven businesses out of the state. So what's the solution to the problem? Less government, less regulation. One thing's for sure, we need to get rid of that MBT and the surcharge, which makes us not even on the radar scope for businesses to want to come here. Mm -hmm. Who wants to come to a state that has to pay taxes on uh, gross receipts instead of profit? So in my opinion, government has overstepped its bounds. Let's back it, back it up. Uh, let's let the people keep their money, and let's just use a little common sense. The laws of economics work whether government works or not. Whatever you tax more of, you will get less of. Businesses will go where they can make a profit. That's not Michigan. Um, I'll be fair. I asked Mr. Johnson to give uh, President Obama a grade. How about uh, you give Governor Granholm a grade right now, A through F? <laughs> well, uh, I probably disagreed just about on everything she's done. I'd give her about a D plus uh, just because uh, I don't think, I think she gave a good speech just like Obama does, but there's two parts to a speech. When you give it, there's content, and then there's basically how you present it. She was a good presenter, but the content wasn't there. People can say a lot of words. Uh, there's an old biblical saying where there's where, the, where, there's, a, where there's many words, there's sin. Uh, and I'm not saying that's that she's sinning here, but what yep. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, when somebody tells me a lot of things and says a lot of things but doesn't really say anything, it bothers me. So I would say Granholm did an outstanding job of presenting or, or talking, but she didn't have much content in her speeches. When she spoke at you know, the uh, state of the state and so forth. I just listened to that and I'd have two pages of notes saying why everything she just said will not work in an economy. I think eco economics 101, she missed either in college or in her high school classes because it doesn't work. Eleanor Clift was in town. I know you, you know she's a contributing editor to Newsweek magazine, was here yesterday. You see her on the McLaughlin Group. She was uh, here for the American Civil Liberties Union uh, and gave a speech and she said, quote, I think we're going to see a lot of spirited campaigning before November, so get your BS detector out. There will be a lot of lies spread on both sides. You are both uh, candidates at the moment. I mean, you, you take issue with that, I would think. Well, I'm sure that there will be BS spread somewhere. Where my, my <laughs> campaign is uh, doing its best, and we are being very forthright and being very sensitive to make sure that whatever comes out, that it is not BS, that it is nothing but the truth. And of course, there'll be people who disagree with it. That, that of course, is democracy, and we, we welcome debate. But we're not trying to cast any aspersions. We're not making personal attacks. We're simply just going straight at the issues. And we're going at them in a way that is very forthright, very direct, and not shying away from the values and principles we believe in. Representative, oh, go ahead. You, you can tell where a person's going based on where they've been. Now, suddenly, it's very popular to be conservative. So what you're seeing, in my opinion, a lot of liberal Democrats suddenly becoming pro-business, pro-everything they can to try to sell the idea that they're more conservative. And as soon as they get elected, they'll do a flip and they'll go right back to big government, big spending. It happens every time. So, yeah, there's going to be a big BS detector here, and I think we'll find out what will happen after the election. But this election is different than any. Uh, President Obama, people have lost confidence in him. Uh, they lost, lost confidence in Granholm months ago, years ago. This is going to be a big turning point for the Republicans. They will win big this next election. How's your reelect going? Uh, it's just fine. I'll be here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, and thanks for being here this You're morning, welcome. too. State Representative Dave Agema from West Michigan and candidate for Congress, Fred Johnson, the author. We can find your books uh, online and wherever books are sold. 
online wherever books are sold. All right. And, and I you, recommend buying them. And vote for him wherever you can, he says, too. We're 46 days away from the general election. Nice to meet you. We'll talk again soon. Good to meet you, too. Thank, Thank you. you very much. 35 minutes after the hour, Michael Patrick.